is quite a watery pink this now. There we go. And that's that done. Next, what we have on the go is one of the newer paints that I just picked up. Well, I'm saying not newer paints, it's one I've just added to. And that is Eshin Grey. So I'm going to add some of this to the palette. Now, because I want different shades of things into the Eshin Grey, because I don't want everything to be the same, I'm going to add a little bit of the Ushabti Bow. Now, I don't want this to be as pale as the Um, Dawnstone, but I don't want it to be as dark or too dark rather. So we're going to do that and then into that as well we're going to add some of the Cantor Blue which I saw earlier. Just a little bit. Not much. Again just to change the shade of the paint rather than actually the colour. That's it. That will do fine. We want to be adding some of the Cantor Blue to the palette anyway a little later. I could have done it now, but I want to concentrate on one colour at a time for you. And this colour is going to be the colour I'm using for the, um, the top item of clothing. So I've got the pick in the wrong one there. Trust me. And so, so all the top of clothing, except for that thing that's round is like, it's like a tabard kind of thing. All, all except for that is going to be this colour. Now I've mixed enough, now what's, what, what you'd think would be too much for the initial thing because once we've been, um, what's the word I'm looking for, once we've been giving this a wash it's going to look a little darker and therefore it's going to need highlighting. So we can add a paler shade to it a little later when it's the highlight step I've just noticed I have missed a, um, an area of um, oh dear god um, what's it called? chin mail so I'll have to go back into that in a moment and get that done So you just add the colour where you think it should be. Because if you, that's where you think it should be, that's where it is. So you'll set out different areas that you want different colours. And then stick to those areas. You know, there will be times when you think, right, I'm doing this, that and the other, and then you think when you start applying the paint that it's not going to work because um, the colours are too, either too similar or you want a darker colour beneath a paler colour, which ideally is that's what you need. Um, so if I was doing all these greys, I would do this as the paler grey, and then that part as the darker grey. 
sorry, no, I'd do this as the darker grey and then that part as the paler grey to make it stand out. Um, you wouldn't want to do it the other way around because it wouldn't look right. Well, not, not to me anyway. Um, I mean, I've not. And I've done the leggings as a different, as a paler grey. Um, but when I come to add the wash, it's going to look darker. So I'm going to make this one paler anyway. So I have it in my head what I want to do. But if you're going to do, if you're going to have an area that is going to that you've decided is going to be darker, then you then if you have a paler colour next to it or in the case of layered clothing if you have the darker colour as the upper layer and the the darker colour as the upper layer and the paler colour I'll start this one again because I'm getting myself all tongue tied if you have the darker colour as the lower colour and the paler colour as the upper colour it will look much nicer so this colour darker is the lower level and that colour paler as the upper level or upper layer dark against light so you can see light against um, light things you can see better if there's something dark next to it dark things you can see better if there's something pale next to it so it's just the way it is no, so that's why you want to make the attention to being the upper layers rather than the lower layer of clothing so you'd always have the for me anyway you would have the lower layer as the darker colour. I hope I've managed to explain this right because I feel as though I'm getting myself all tongue tied. <laughs> oh. I hope you get what I mean. There we go. So I do need to go back into the uh, Warplock bronze, which is the metallic colour that we've used previously, to touch up on some of the metallic areas. And I also need to go back to the other minis with this colour because I have missed a certain part of this. My nose is getting really, really itchy and it's annoying the life out of me. Every time I start concentrating, my nose itches. <laughs> Don't know why. Oh well. But that is the area that I forgot to paint on the other. The bit that I'm doing now. Oops. I just move that over a touch. Um. But yeah, and I. I've realised I've missed a couple of areas on some model, some some of the model with the uh, war plot bronze. So yeah, I am going to have to go back in. But then again, if you watched any of my videos before, you know that I always have to go back to areas that I've already painted because I've missed something. <laughs> There you go. So, wash the brush out, give it a little bit of a dry, and then back into the warplot bronze. And that bit, and I've not done that part there. Blob of water on the brush 
that I didn't particularly want to drop onto the mini as I was painting it. And with that, okay, let's have a proper look round. It looks it. Yep, quite happy with that one. Let's have a look at this one. <coughs> Miss that part. That part. But apart from that, yep, that's fine. With this one, again, I've missed that part on each mini, I think, near enough. And that looks about right. Okay, going back into the mix we did for the clothing area. With each one of these it's just painting the shoulders, not the back of the neck. There we are. That's that bit done. Next we have the um, tabard, sash, whatever you want to call it. Canto blue, that's the colour we're going to be using. So I'm going to add a dollop of that to our palette. Oops. And this will go over everywhere. And this tabard. I'm assuming that's part of the tabard. It looks like it. I may be wrong. And that's an area of the for the other comma that we've just used. So there are times when you only get to find out what combs you should be using when you've got to paint another colour. Well, sometimes the details seem to mislead you. But, not to worry. No. The whole thing of this is just enjoy the painting. Continue there and all the way around, making sure that it's on the top area is the colour I want it to be, just like so. I do have a tendency of going quiet when I'm concentrating, I apologise for that. Um, I just want to make sure all the areas I want painted this colour, I uh, painted this colour. As I said, we're going to have to go back into this colour a little later just for that patch on the back. Oh, this itch would go away, it's annoying the life out of me now. It's not there until I start concentrating, I tell you. It's <laughs> So, the tabard is nearly done. After this, we're going to be going over the boots 
and then giving a wash same boots and more shoes in this model uh, and then giving it a wash um, now the wash I'm giving this one is going to be a very straightforward just normal oil wash all over everywhere really darkens it down I'm going to say over if we're everywhere except what should be flesh. Mm. So the bone parts and the that part there is going to be a different colour. Going back into this to sharpen the point of the bristle um, by giving it a twist as I run it through the paint. So if you want to put a point on your the bristles of your brush, that's all you need to do, just twist it as you point it through the paint. Sometimes it works. Sometimes like this one, it doesn't, there's still one bristle that's sticking out, the awkward so-and-so. I think I really need to get replace these brushes. I've not looked after these as long as I should have done. Um, I've left them without washing them for ages sometimes. Um, because I've stopped painting because I've been feeling iffy I've just not really been in the mood um, well not, not, okay, so not being able to so I spend the time to give them a proper clean like I should do um, for the dizziness issues that I've had sometimes when I finish painting I've just Basically dropped everything and that's it and the brushes have come a little I'll bore the brunt of that on the red so they do need either a little bit of TLC no there's something actually stuck to the bristle there <laughs> sorry but I don't know what the hell that was. Back into the colour we did for the shirt. And we'll just touch into the. We don't have to get everywhere. But it's just touching in the hole. So you see some of that colour. There we go, and now the next job is the boots, which I was, was that you? Yeah, you made it nice up with that. So obviously I've not closed the front door properly and a little bit of breeze or vibration pushed it. <laughs> that this black is going to be for the boots or the shoes in this case and we'll just quick once over with this that isn't my phone that beat then <laughs> my phone's plugged into the uh, mains and being used as my microphone and that's one of the reasons why 
I'm going to go over to Patreon because I want to get better sound for the channel. So better microphones. better um, video editing software lights and that kind of thing and I just want to make sure that the video content that goes out is the best that can possibly make it with all the support I've been getting over the past few weeks you know, I think, well, a few weeks, a few years, I really do believe that I owe each and every one of my subscribers the best possible output that I can give. So, that's why I'm looking towards making the improvements. <coughs> There's other issues as well that uh, I seem to be struggling with at the moment. Um, they have to do with the computer. I need some severe upgrades to my computer to keep the editing process going. If it's not one thing, it's another. Right, so we've just used a little bit of dry at the back. And this is going to be going on the wood part of the um, crossbow. So anyone that is wood on the crossbow is going to get a coating of this. In fact, all of the rest of the crossbow is going to get a coating of this. And I'm going to be precise on where I put this as well. I want to make sure that this covers the wood area but also distinguishes the metal area as well so when I come to highlight that I can see which bit is which if you get me drift and there's probably other metal areas of this that will be there but As uh, the way it's sculpted, you can't really see. There's nothing really designated as different for it, so I'm not going to be beating myself up trying to make details there that aren't there in the first place. So I'm just going to make sure that the bits that I want to differentiate from metal I'm going to use with this colour and it's not a too different a shade actually from the um, in fact I have gone over somewhere that I didn't want to go over in the first one. Oh heck That will teach me. <laughs> so. um, the bit there at the end where the arrow is, there's metal around it. And I've managed to, say an arrow, a point, 
the arrowhead, bolt head, whatever you want to call it. Um, around it there's metal and I think I've gone over it on the first one. I'll have to go back and double check. But it's no big deal if I have, I can always touch up before I do anything else. That's the beauty of using acrylics, I can always go back and correct any of what Bob Ross would call happy accidents. <laughs> As he says, we don't make mistakes, we have happy accidents. It's not fair wrong. So, I'll just make sure the arrow head is I'm going to call it an arrow head just for the sake of it. Um, the pointy bit of this projectile is <laughs> I'm going to make sure that, that is correct on each one before I actually start washing. Even though I'm actually going to be washing the, the crossbow. watching there that I haven't seen. There we go. And that will be about it for this stage. Yes, I just have to go and tidy up some of the areas before we start washing, but that's not a big problem. In fact, I'm safe. I didn't do. I didn't cover the first bit like I thought I had. So that's good. Okay, so first off, next, what we need to do is cover our paints so we don't. So they don't dry upon us. And now we can start on our washing. Now, first and foremost, the wash that we're going to be using is Nolan Oil, which is this colour. <coughs> this is going over near enough everywhere. So we'll get and put these to one side, put that to that side. And we'll just go over enough all the areas with this. Now I don't want it incredibly thick. Um, it's not. I don't want it to look like it's been dipped in the stuff. I want it to look as though it's been gently applied with a brush. Um, so watch out for it pooling in areas. And if you do see it pooling then make sure you um, brush it out of those areas because the one thing we don't want to do is obstruct any of the detail at all because that's what will happen if you allow this to pull Touching the boots because it's black anyway, and the Nolan Oil is a black wash, so there's not much point in doing that. But I say every word that isn't flesh and isn't the crossbar, 
is getting a blast with this null oil wash. Um, and then what we'll do is, as, as it's dry, we'll keep an eye on it. If it's pooling up, we'll get we'll uh, clear clear it out, and then we'll see how it looks when it's dried. If you, you think it needs another wash, then we will give it one. Um, I am not going to um, do all this on camera. I'll do that off camera. So when we come back after this video, it will be to basically finish everything off. Car rating, etc. So I'm going to show you just the one coat of wash that we're applying to this. And then if we need another coat, I'll do that off camera because it's much easier. But I will tell you that I've done it. It will be exactly the same thing as I'm doing now. There's not going to be any difference at all. Um, so, as I say, a very, very light wash. Making sure that it gets all the areas. That we want to get now I want to add as well that I'm doing this these videos not to show you what commas you should use I'm showing you what commas I'm using to help you get the best out of your painting technique I'm trying to show you easy ways of getting good results or reasonable results for a tabletop game I'm not showing you how to create marvellous works of art, how to win competitions for your painting. I'm showing you how to get pleasing results for a tabletop battle game. We're going to be seeing the miniatures from a distance, not in close up. Okay, so. But I'm also showing you how I am painting it, not how they should be painted. So this this is my choice of um, what do we call it? This is my choice of colours I'm using. It's not the choice you must use. Okay, choose whatever colours you want to paint with. Next wash is going to be Agrax Earth Jade, and this is going on the um, the flesh areas even though it's going to be brown on top of green it will give an interesting effect um, and here because I've not done perfect, if I also want to do the crossbow with this as well, and because I've not done a perfect colouring on the skin tone, or the bone, which actually I've got here, in fact I think the arm should have been done the same as the legs. I think I might adjust that when the wash is dried and then give it another wash. The arms should definitely have been the same colour as the legs because it doesn't look like it's skeletal. Whereas the head does. So that's one adjustment I'm going to have to make. And it will be made off camera. So I'm just going to be painting the, the arms once this is dried with this Nurgle's Rot. Not Nurgle's Rot, is it Nurgle's Rot? Uh, Nurgle in green, sorry. Um, Nurgle's, Rock is, Nurgle's Rock, Rot is one of those uh, technical paints, isn't it? So yeah, I'm going to ignore those for the time being. 
and we want to paint the um, the same colour as the lights. So that will be a bit of a difference when you come back to it. In fact, I want to paint the. Not that I really need to paint the cross bit crossbow it's brown and brown but there we are and finally the legs so yeah, I'm not even attempting to do this now while I put wash on it so close because it will just bleed. Um, so once the wash is dried, I'll go over the arms with the Nurgles, uh, Nurgling Green. And then give it a brown wash. And then when we come back, we can start highlighting. So that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. And let's have a look at what we have so far. I'll just show you on one of them. Um, that's what we have. When we come back, we'll get it looking a lot better. So, until then, as always, take care, God bless, and bye for now. Thank you.